Lux presents Hollywood. The Lux Radio Theater brings you Ann Southern and Robert Young in A Night to Remember. Ladies and gentlemen, your producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Greetings from Hollywood, ladies and gentlemen. We can't ration the springtime, but this is one year when it's strictly unpatriotic to get spring fever. There's too much work to be done. And in case you're a bit tired after today's work, we have just the cure for what ails you. It's a little spring tonic called A Night to Remember. And we've received some very convincing testimonials about it from motion picture audiences throughout the nation. Columbia Studios made the picture, and we've been lucky enough to get Robert Young and Anne Southern as our stars tonight. It took a little doing, too, <laughs> because they're both very busy over at metro goldwyn Mayer. Anne has been working in the picture Swing Shift Maisie and Bob in Slightly Dangerous. But tonight we've cast them as detectives in an engaging comedy mystery. It all happens in New York's Greenwich Village, where a mystery story writer and his wife settle down to look for atmosphere. They find it all too quickly when a corpse appears in the backyard. We had a surprise last week, too, but a more pleasant one. We discovered that when some people buy Lux Flakes, they have to take it home on a dog sled. We received a photograph from the northern part of Alberta in Canada, which proves it. It was a picture of a trapper with his sled and dog team. And there on the sled, believe it or not, was a carton of Lux Flakes. The hard-packed snow looked a little cold to the Southern California eye, and the trapper was bundled up to his ears. In the background was a forest of spruce, and the branches were laden with snow. According to the letter, the picture was taken just four miles off the new Alaska highway. That morning, Mrs. DeMille had picked an armful of roses in our garden in Hollywood. So it just goes to show that you'll find Lux Flakes on the job everywhere, even if it takes a dog team to get it there. Now we present the first act of A Night to Remember, starring Robert Young as Jeff Troy and Anne Southern as Nancy. You are now entering Greenwich Village, New York. Population unknown, but interesting. Boundary lines uncertain. Principal industries, art in all its branches. Antiques, boot blacking, spaghetti houses, tea rooms, bar rooms, and rooms to let. Here the artist rubs shoulders with the fake, and the fake rubs shoulders with the phony. You can't tell which is which, for the streets are dark at night, and a good thing, too. Here are great modern apartments, where the rents are sky high. And here are artists' gloomy garrets, where the rents are sky high, too. It's old, it's crooked, it's musty, it's dusty. It's Greenwich Village. Here you are, number 50 Gay Street. Thank you. Our new home, Jeff. Come on. So this is it, huh? Yes, there. Isn't it too wonderful? Well, it's kind of somber looking, isn't it? Oh, darling, you've made up your mind already. You're not going to like it, haven't you? Oh, no, no, no. I think it's all right. It's fine. I... Well, anyway, there'll be a lot of people around, and you'll have a chance to meet them and talk with them and well, find out what goes on inside of them. Uh-huh. That'll be 75 cents. You need any help with the grips? No, thanks. Here. You know, this building looks familiar to me. It's familiar to me, all right. I got the biggest tip I ever got in my life out of that joint. Twenty-five bucks for hauling away a couple of steps. Huh? What did you... Hey! Did you hear what he said? Uh, yes. Trying to be funny, wasn't he? <laughs> I hope so. <laughs> well, come on, sweet. You love the apartment. I just know it. Sure, sure. Well, of course, I rented it at noon. In the evening like this, well, it's, it's bound to look a little dreary. Sure, sure. Well, ring the bell, dear. I know you'll be able to write down here, darling, really right. Sure, sure. Oh, Jeff, don't keep saying sure, sure. Don't you like the place? Why, sure. Uh, uh certainly. Old stiffs, uh, uh, buildings have always interested me. Of course, I never lived in one. Well, Jeff, this one's really got atmosphere. Hmm. Sure has. 
Say, why doesn't someone answer the door? Well, ring it again, dear. Are you sure it was 50 Gay Street? Oh, I'm positive I... Oh. Oh, good evening. Hello. What do you want? <laughs> well, I'm Mrs. Troy. Don't you remember me? Oh, yeah. I couldn't see you. And this is Mr. Troy. Dear, this is Mr. Turner. How do you do, Mr. Turner? Didn't expect you till next Thursday. Oh, I know, but we thought as long as the apartment was vacant, we could come a little earlier. My husband is anxious to get to work, aren't you, dear? We'll be glad to pay for the extra few days. That's not the point. I haven't had the lights connected yet. Besides, the housekeeper hasn't finished cleaning the place. Oh, but our furniture's on the way. It ought to be here any minute. I'm afraid we'll just have to make the best of it. <laughs> that is, if it's all right with you, Mr. Turner. I suppose it has to be. Come in. Got some candles in the place. You have to get by with those for tonight. Uh, what was that? Well, it wasn't the six o'clock whistle. <laughs> no. Oh, Mr. Turner. Mr. Turner. What are you yelling about? Mr. Stop it. Mr. Turner, it happened again. Shut up. What happened again? I was cleaning in the basement and that thing, whatever it is, crawled across my feet. That thing? What thing? The thing. Why don't you keep quiet? Go on now. But it's true. I couldn't move. It held me to the floor. Oh, Mr. Turner, I'm not going down in that basement again. I don't care. You fire me. I'll fire you right now if you don't shut up. I'll go in my apartment and wait for me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mrs. Salter is a little crazy. Uh, she keeps imagining that some big animal crawls across her feet. <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh, yes. Well, uh, shall we go upstairs and take a look at our little nest? Well, Jeff, it's, um, it's not upstairs. Huh? No, it's downstairs. In the basement? Uh-huh. Well, you're just full of surprises, aren't you? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> Mr. Troy, your wife tells me you're a novelist. That's funny, she never told me. Well, darling, I don't tell you everything. What kind of books do you write? Well, up to now, nothing but murder mysteries. Murder mysteries? Yes, you know the kind. With blood seeping under the door and all that horrible stuff. But my husband's next book is about Greenwich Village. I love the story. I see. Well, here's your place. You'll find the candles over the fireplace. Thank you. Let me know if there's anything I can do for you. Thank you. I hope you get through the night all right. Huh? Uh, uh, thank you. Oh, uh, Jeff, I'll get the candle. It must be right over here. The place has an echo. Oh, it'll be different when the furniture gets in. Uh, I hope so. Have you got a match, dear? Yeah, I did have one. Wait a minute. Here's the candle. Wait until you see the... Uh, Jeff? Huh? Jeff? That thing. What thing? It's on my foot. It's crawling on me. Oh, <laughs> stop it. Stop it. It's my typewriter case. I just put it down there. Oh, oh, oh Jeff. Now, uh, don't be silly. Uh, uh, where's the candle? <laughs> Wasn't that ridiculous of me? As if anything could be crawling around here. Oh, I don't know. Now that I see the place, it's quite possible. Jeff. Yeah. You know, I've got the strangest feeling. Nancy, I've been in this room before. Well, how could you? It's been vacant for years. And everything looks familiar. Those windows and that door and the fireplace. Oh, don't be ridiculous. Okay. Well, show me around, huh? Where's the bedroom? Oh, well, um, this is the bedroom, dear. Oh, is it? Uh-huh. Well, where's the living room? Uh, well, um, uh, this is the living room, too, dear. Oh, I see. And the, uh, dining room? Uh, this, this is, is the, the dining, dining room, room, dear. dear. <laughs> yes, I get it. Oh, but it's very convenient, darling, and it has got a kitchenette. Well, that's fine. What's this, a closet? Sort of small, isn't it? Well, Jeff, that's the bathroom. Oh. Oh, so it is. The closet is over there. The closet? Uh-huh. One closet? Uh-huh. Oh, but, Jeff, there's the loveliest little garden outside. A garden? Oh, well, I can hang my clothes out there. Sure. <laughs> oh, now, darling, please. Hey, look at this. A horseshoe. A horseshoe. Right in the middle of the floor. Hmm, I wonder how they got a horse down those steps. <laughs> oh, Jeff, you know what that is. That's good luck finding a horseshoe. Now, close your eyes and make a wish. Okay. I wish my dear wife had never found this dump. And I wish my dear husband weren't such a dope. Yeah, well. I wish he'd just soak up some of this lovely atmosphere and write a bestseller in which no one was murdered. 
I wish my dear husband would kiss me. Well, that wish you can have. Oh, darling. Please say everything's all right. You want me to? Yes. Everything's all right. <laughs> I know, you're just hungry. We'll get out of here and get something to eat. That'll make you feel better. Just getting out of here will help. Come on, put out the candle. <laughs> There's a little restaurant just around the corner, darling. Fine. Oh, and I ought to telephone the moving men, too. Oh, and Jeff, I didn't tell you. What? In that little garden outside, there's a fountain. Isn't that wonderful? A fountain? Well, what do you know? Now, how have I managed to get along all these years without a fountain? Wait, Anne. Anne who? Anne, wait a minute. Anne. Why, Nancy. Well, where on earth did you come from? Where did you come from? I haven't seen you in ages. Why, it's been two years at least. Let me look at you. Well, you look wonderful. I never was so glad to see anybody in my life. Well, neither was I. Oh, Anne, this is my husband, Jeff Troy. How do you do? This is Anne Stafford, dear. Well, Anne Scott. I'm married, too. Oh. Well, congratulations to both you girls. Oh. <laughs> oh. Well, Anne, do you live here? Yes, I... I live on the second floor. Well, how wonderful. We do, too. What? Yes, we just moved into the basement apartment. The basement apartment? Uh-huh. Well, why did you move here? I mean, did somebody tell you that... Oh, I'm so mixed up. I don't know what I'm saying. Well, I have to be running along. I'm terribly late. Goodbye, Nancy. Well, goodbye, Anne. Well, mm. for heaven's sake, that was a funny way to act, wasn't it? Mm. What's she so upset about? Well, I guess she's jealous. Jealous of what? Well, for years she's wanted that thing that crawls in the basement, and now you've got it. <laughs> oh, don't be silly, darling. She's married, too, you know. Mm-hmm. Well, let's eat. Well, well, hello, stranger. I'm Polly. Hello, Polly. I'm a stranger. My wife is right outside telephoning. Now, beat it, kid. Oh, now, it's all right. I own this place. Oh. Oh, well, <laughs> I'm sorry. Welcome to Polly's Tea Shoppy. Is that what it is? Looks like a bar roomy. Oh, same thing, Sonny. What are you, a sculptor, painter, writer? Just hungry. Writer, huh? Oh, Jeff, while I was in the telephone booth, I overheard a man that is, um... Oh, excuse me. Well, darling, this is Polly. Hello, darling. Hello, Polly. And my name is Nancy. How do you do? What did you say, Nancy, while you were in the telephone booth? You overheard what? Well, you see that man over there, the big one standing by the bar? Yeah. I heard him talking in the next booth, and he was threatening someone. Who? Did he mention any name? No. Well, why worry about a phone conversation? If you'd been minding your own business, you wouldn't have heard him. But he was telling whoever it was to meet him in our apartment. Well, they can't meet in the phone booth. They... <laughs> Did you say our apartment? Yes, dear. I distinctly heard him say basement apartment 50 Gay Street. 50 Gay? Are you sure? Yes. Why does that surprise you, Polly? Why, I... I live there. Oh. Yes, I have an apartment on the second floor. Well, we're neighbors. We just took the basement apartment. The basement? Well, that's fine. I'll be seeing you. So long. Say, what's so funny about our apartment? I mean, outside of what we know. Uh, Jeff, I'm scared. Oh, don't be scared. Where's the man? Point him out. Well, there he is. That big fella by the bar. The one with the scar on his face? Yeah. He's enough to scare anybody. Well... Not me. I'll go over and see what it's all about. Jeff, no, you'll get hurt. Now, don't be a fool. I've always been a fool. Jeff, come back. You know what happened the last time. Hiya, pal. How's everything going? You checking to me? Certainly. Oh, I guess you don't know me, do you? But uh, I think we ought to have a little conversation. Get out of here. What's the matter? I don't know you, and I don't want to know you, see? Now, just a minute. Who do you think you're pushing? You. Ooh. Before the cops, everybody back to the tables, please. Hey, lady, please, get your husband out, Oh, please. keep quiet, Jeff. Jeff, look at me. Speak to me. Oh. Jeff, speak to me. Oh, is that fella gone? Yes. Yeah. Okay, what do you want to talk about? Oh. Come on, darling, lean on me. Oh, I'm all right. I left the candle right over here. Here it is. Oh. Home at last. 
No place like home, is there? No, and you must feel terrible. Sit down, dear. Where, on the floor? Hey, listen. Do you hear something? Why, yes. It sounds like water running. Must be in the bathroom. Well, for the love of... Now bring the candle here. Turn it off, darling. Well, that's funny. Tub's full of water. Well, it wasn't running when we... Jeff. Hmm? You realize what it means? That man from the restaurant has been here. Oh, you stop being ridiculous. Why would he want to fill the bathtub? Well, maybe he wanted to wash off the blood after the beating you gave him. Thank you, dear. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have said that. Jeff, how did that get in the tub? The horseshoe. Did you put it there? Why would I put a horseshoe in a tub of water? Uh, Jeff, there's something... I don't like this. Neither do I. But I've got the solution. What? Let's move. No. I've paid two months in advance and we're going... Shut up. What'd you say? Shut up. Listen. Jeff. There's... Oh, Jeff. Hmm. There's something moving. It's... It's over there. It's... In the closet. Now, 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 keep calm. Keep calm. Oh, let's get out of here. Wait. Don't you think we ought to go and find out what this is all about? Well, aren't you scared? I was scared when I came in. I'm petrified now. Oh. <laughs> Listen, you go and stand over by the door. Yeah. If you hear anything unusual, run like the devil and leave the door open for me. Okay. <laughs> well, go ahead. Open the closet. Ready? I think so. But go on, open it. Hey. Stop screaming. Oh, what's that? What is it? It's a turtle. Jeff, don't joke. It's a turtle, I tell you. Come here and look. See? <laughs> Why, it is a turtle. <laughs> He's a big old rascal, too. Look at him. Darling, the crawling monster on the housekeeper's feet. That's right. Of course. <laughs> oh, look, there's carving on his back. They're initials, see? B P M W L S J T J T. Well, they're my initials. Hey, do you remember my telling you this place looked familiar? Yes. Well, it is. This used to be a speakeasy. No. Sure, this was Harry's place. A speakeasy? And this is old Hickory. Why, he was a pet around here. Those initials on his back were the Roll of Honor. Roll of Honor? Mm-hmm. Every New Year's Eve, they had a drinking contest, and the last man on his feet was placed on the Roll of Honor. <laughs> oh. oh, darling, and you only made it once. Well, I only competed once. Oh, those were the days. <laughs> so that's what the cab driver meant. Who? The cab driver. He said he got $25 for hauling away a couple of stiffs. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I thought it was a bargain rate for hiding bodies. <laughs> I don't know. Around here, they do things pretty cheap. Well, come on, old Hickory. I'll put you to bed. Where did he sleep? He used to sleep out by the fountain in the garden. Oh, a turtle. Well, <laughs> that's a relief. Sure. Frightened over nothing. Don't you feel foolish? <laughs> I always do. So do I. <laughs> Except Jeff. Except what? Except the turtle couldn't have filled that bathtub. Oh. No. But... Jeff. Shh. Uh, uh, who is it? Oven man. Oh. The moving man at last. Uh, come on in. What held you up? Sorry, buddy. Sorry. What do you want the junk? Right in here, and it's not junk, so take it easy. Okay, Flanagan, bring it down. Okay. Hey, wait, listen. Hey. Come on, open up. Open up. Mm, just a minute. Who is it? Open the door. Well, just a second. Well, what's the excitement? Oh, who are you? Police department, lady. Police? Sorry to wake you up so early, but we had a report that a man was sunbathing in your garden. Sunbathing? Oh, it must be Jeff. Jeff, where are you? Take a look, Joe. Okay. Well, I'm not so sure I like this. Oh, that's too bad. If my husband wants to lie down in our private garden, I can't see it's any of your business. No? Did you know he was out there? Well, no, I've been asleep. You must have gotten up early. Jeff, Jeff! Better not go out there, lady. Why not? We don't want him disturbed, see? Well, is he asleep? I'll wake him up. It's too late, lady. He's dead. He's dead? He's... He's... Now look what you've done, Joe. She's fainted. Dames can't stand anything, can they? Pick her up. <laughs> <laughs> 
Hey, what's going on here? Who are you? Well, I live here. I went out to get some groceries and I... Nancy. Nancy. What's the matter with her? What's wrong here? Now, take it easy. Take it easy. There's been a murder, that's all. A murder? A murder? Oh. Oh, Joe. What's the matter with him? You feel all right now, Mr. Troy? Yeah, I'm okay. I... I thought he was talking about my wife, that's all. Yes, and I thought he was talking about you, darling. Well, if you're both up to it, I'll have to ask you to look at the body. Okay? Well, I guess so. Sure, sure. Uh, take that sheet off the body, Joe. Right. <gasps> yeah. Well, you recognize him? Yeah, it's the man who was in the restaurant. What's his name? We don't know. How long have you known him? Well, we don't know him. We never saw him before last night when my husband had a fight with him. <laughs> oh, yeah? Where? In the restaurant. How about this, Mr. Troy? That's right. So you admit exchanging blows with him? Oh, there was no exchange. <laughs> Only two blows were struck. He struck my husband, and my husband struck the floor. Oh, now, Nancy, I pushed him once, didn't I? Oh, what's a little push? You didn't kill him, did Just you? Just a minute. Mr. Troy, I want you to take a look at this thing here. You ever seen it before? Of course. Why, certainly, that's my husband's horseshoe. Oh, your husband's, huh? Yes, it's his good luck charm. Well, it might be good luck for some people, but this man here was murdered with it. Act two of A Night to Remember, starring Ann Southern and Robert Young, will follow in just a moment. Tonight, we have a new Between the Acts feature to offer you, an interview with someone you never thought you'd hear. Frankly, we don't know how to explain it ourselves, except to say that radio is a very strange thing. But our guest tonight is a big white bird carrying a little black bag. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Stork, a bird who hasn't time to catch his breath these days. Fly right up to the microphone, Dr. Stork. Oh, thank you, Mr. Kennedy. I'll just stay here where I can sit down, if you don't mind. Keeping you pretty busy, are they? Busy? Oh, why, Mr. Kennedy, I should say so. Nearly three million babies I brought here in America last year. And this year... Oh, well, I declare I don't know what I'll do if this keeps up. <laughs> After all, one pair of wings can do just so much. Well, Dr. Stork, in a way, you know, you have the easiest part of the job. You just bring them. You don't have to take care of them. <laughs> yes, Mr. Kennedy... Every time I drop one of the little darlings down the chimney, I deliver a bundle of washing problems. Oh, but washing babies' things is no problem. No? Not with new, improved Lux Flakes, Doctor. Why, those richer, longer-lasting suds take out the dirt like nobody's business and leave babies' woolies soft and warm and unshrunken. Help them last longer, too. You don't say. And Lux is so gentle. Diapers washed in Lux Flakes never have any harmful alkali left in them to irritate baby's tender skin. You know how important that is, Doctor. Oh, very. Perhaps we could work out a deal. We'll supply you with new, improved Lux, and then every time you bring a baby, you bring along a box of Lux Flakes, too. Well, Mr. Kennedy, I don't think that's necessary. I think I've got a simpler solution. What? I'll whisper this in every baby's ear. Tell your mother to use Lux for washing everything you wear. <laughs> Thank you very much, Doctor. Now, our producer, Mr. DeMille. Act two of A Night to Remember, starring Ann Southern as Nancy and Robert Young as Jeff. <laughs> Nancy and Jeff have told their story to Detective Hankin, who didn't believe a word of it. In the gloomy apartment in the basement, the cross-examination continues. So you heard the deceased talking over the phone? I told you. He made an appointment to meet somebody here in our apartment. Therefore, we can assume that the person who killed him lives in this building. I wouldn't be so anxious to make that point, Mr. Troy. After all, you live here, too. Huh? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I... All right, inside, Turner. Here's the manager of the joint, Chief. Well, hello, Turner. Still hanging around the old joint, huh? I own the building. Well, I'm not surprised. The prices you and Harry used to get for that bathtub gin. Hey, were you Harry's partner? Up to a certain point, he was Harry's partner, weren't you, Turner? And then one day, poor old Harry turned up missing. Didn't he, Turner? I don't know what happened to Harry. He and I never had any trouble. We got along fine. You mean you got along fine. Did you take a look at the stiff, Turner? Yes. Good, you know him? 
Yes, his name is Louis Kaufman. How long have you known him? Oh, about three months. How well? That's about all. You know where he lived? Yes. Where? Come on, come on, where? He lived here. On the third floor. Now, we're getting someplace. Wait a minute. Look, Inspector, if he lived on the third floor, why did he tell somebody to meet him here in our apartment? Maybe he didn't tell somebody to meet him here in your apartment. But you're forgetting. My wife told you that she heard him make the date over the phone. Oh, oh no. I'm not forgetting what your wife told me. Hey, wait a minute. You're not insinuating... Sit down, that... Sonny. Now, just a moment. You heard what he said. Be seated. Inspector, if I'm a suspect in this case, I've got a right to be heard. A suspect? Who's a suspect? What do you want to say? Well, in the first place, I think you're going about this thing all wrong. My, my, I'm sorry to hear that. Look, Inspector, why don't you let me take this guy down to headquarters where we can have a nice, quiet talk? Here, here, you let go of him. He's my husband. Let him go, Bowling. He may have some ideas. He writes detective stories. <laughs> yeah? Oh, sure, Jeff Troy. Well, I read one of your books, Mr. Troy. Murder on the Terrace. Oh, did you? Yeah. I thought it stank. <laughs> uh, much obliged. Go ahead, Mr. Troy. What were you saying? Well, in the first place, you've no reason to think that my wife is lying. Who said I was lying? No, no, you said... All right, all right, your wife told the truth. Now what do we do? Follow it up. Find out who was talking to the dead man over the phone. Question everybody in this building. Thank you so very much, sir. But do you mind if I take one look at the dead man's apartment first? Go ahead, but you're wasting time. You probably won't find a thing up there. Apartment 3B. This it, Turner? Yes. Do you mind if I come in, Inspector? Oh, what's the use, Mr. Troy? We're not going to find anything. Open the door, Bowling. Well, for the love of... Hey. Yeah. Well, it looks like you were right, Mr. Troy. There isn't even any furniture here. You see? What did I tell you? Yeah? How did you know? Well, I, uh, di uh I didn't know. Uh-huh. What about this, Turner? I, uh, I don't understand it. Did uh, Kaufman have furniture? Of course. When did you last see it? Last time I was up here, a couple of days ago. He moved all of his furniture out of here without you knowing it? What sort of furniture did he have? Oh, the usual thing. I've, i well, I didn't pay any attention to it. What color were the drapes at the windows? I... I don't remember. <laughs> You've got the same bad memory you had when your partner Harry disappeared, haven't you, Turner? No, I just don't remember. Hey, hey, boss. Well? There's somebody in that closet. I just saw the door move. Get back, everybody. Bowling, you'll cover the door while I open it. Okay. <laughs> All right, come on out, Mother oh. Hubbard. Oh. Mrs. Salter. Oh, I haven't done anything. Honest, I haven't. Who is this? Mrs. Salter, the housekeeper. Honest, Mr. Turner, I don't know anything about it. About what? Uh, about the furniture disappearing and whatever else has happened. What makes you think anything else has happened? Well, I saw the police arrive out of my window, so I came in here to see what I could see out of those back windows. Then I saw that all the furniture was gone. But why did you hide in the closet? Well, I just told you. I was looking out of my front window when the police arrived, so I came in here to see what I could see out of those back windows. Then I noticed that all the furniture was gone. Naturally, I was excited, and then I heard you coming, and I hid in the closet. You heard me coming, and then you hid in the closet. Why? Inspector, I can tell you why she hid in the closet. Yeah? Sure. She was looking out her front window when she heard the police come. So then she came in here to see what she could see out of the back. Then she found all the furniture gone. Naturally, she was excited. Then she heard somebody coming and she hid in the closet. Ah, <laughs> uh, I should be a detective. <laughs> get out of here. What? Get out! All right, all right, don't get sore. I... Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't see you. That's all right. You want to go up? Uh, yes. Thanks. My name's Troy. I live in the basement. Yes? You live here? My name is Scott. Oh, yes. We met your wife yesterday. How do you do, Mr. Scott? Excuse me, will you? I'm in a hurry. Sure. Sorry. I've, uh... Scott! Scott! Come here, quick! It isn't Scott. It's me. Oh. Oh. Hello. Hello, Polly. I, uh, I thought you were someone else. Mm -hmm. You thought I was Mr. Scott. Yes. Well, there's been a lot of excitement around here today, hasn't there? Yes, I was watching things from my window. Oh, you were, huh? Hey, is that coffee that I smell? Yes. Mmm, smells great. I love coffee. Well, Oh, I... thanks. It's very kind of you, Polly. Okay, come on in. Say, this is a cozy little place. Thank you. How do you like your coffee? Oh, just as it comes, please. Say, you've got a cozy little place here. Hey, you said that before. Oh, so I did, yeah. Hmm... Nice boy. What? That photograph on the desk. Nice looking boy. Oh, that's my son. I keep him in a school upstate. Oh, where do you keep his father? About as far away as possible. I'm a divorcee. Oh. 
By the way, did you know the man that was killed was the same fellow that was in the restaurant last night? Why, uh, yes. Well, why didn't you tell me that he lived in this house? Well, uh, have some more coffee, Mr. Kirk. Well, hey. Oh, oh, I'm so well, sorry. I spilled it all over you, didn't I? Well, it's all right. It's perfectly all right. I love coffee. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't use your handkerchief. Here, I'll get a dish towel. Oh, don't bother. Say your tablecloth's soaking. I'll take it off for you, huh? No, no. It's all right, really. Think nothing of it, Polly. I... Hey, there's a letter under here. Let me have it, please. A little wet, I'm afraid. Give me the letter. No harm done, though. You can still read the address. Please. Andrew Brule, 507. Give me that letter. Well, well. Who is he, the boyfriend? What's all the excitement? Oh, I... I'm sorry. I, I didn't mean to yell like that. This must be pretty important. Well, I... I just forgot to mail it, that's all. I see. <laughs> a love letter, huh? <laughs> May I have it now? Uh-uh. Please. No, 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 don't reach. Pretty, please. No, no, stop. Stop, you're tickling me. <laughs> <laughs> don't. <laughs> uh, uh, hello. Hello. Oh. <laughs> hello, Nancy. Hello. I'm sorry, I forgot to knock. Well, we were just kidding around. Uh, <laughs> yes, yes, uh, about this letter. Yes, about this letter. <laughs> yes, about the letter. <clears throat> well, when you get through playing post office, your breakfast is ready. Uh-oh. Nancy! Wait, my letter! Here. Nancy, wait. Nancy, hey! Keep away from me. Nancy, darling, wait a minute. Nancy, you know, I think Polly thought you were jealous. You take your <laughs> hands off me, you wolf. Nancy, sweetheart, you're not jealous, are you? Of course I'm not jealous. I... Now, let go of me. You are jealous. I am not, and don't speak to me. Suppose I acted that way about you. Oh, you never have, have you? I certainly have not. Jealousy is a childish trait. Oh, really? Well, what about that man I was dancing with that night? I suppose you weren't jealous of him. Him? Certainly I wasn't jealous of him. Oh, no, of course not. You were just mad enough to kill him, that's all. Who was mad enough to kill who? Oh. Uh-oh. <laughs> oh, Inspector. Come on, come on. Who was mad enough to kill who? Now you see what you've done. Well, what I've done? What about you? Yeah, what about you, Mr. Troy? I can explain all this. Yeah, well, we're going to give you a chance, too, at headquarters. Get your hat. What? Come on, get your hat, Troy. Oh, no, he didn't do anything. He wouldn't hurt a fly. Only when he's mad enough to kill a man. Oh, huh? no, Inspector, listen. Come it's... on. Jeff, don't go. Don't go with him. Well, he ain't got no choice, lady. Come on. <laughs> you, Nancy, the killer's home. Jeff. Hiya, honey. Oh, Jeff, darling, you're back. Not a mark on me, darling. But well, what happened down at headquarters? Oh, nothing much. They asked me a lot of questions. First, they thought the guy died from that crack in the head. Yeah. But after the autopsy, they found out he was drowned. Drowned? Yeah. Remember the water running in the tub when we came in last night? Yes. Well, I told him about it. You see, whoever killed him must have knocked him unconscious and then put him in the tub. They put him... They... What's the matter? Oh, Jeff. I just took a bath in that tub. <laughs> oh, Jeff, this is a horrible place. Let's get out of here. Get out? We can. Nancy, don't you see this is our big break? <laughs> I came down here to write a story, and I've got one. But it was going to be a love story. Well, you love me, don't you? And I love you. Well, what's that got to do with it? Well, that's our love story. Two people deeply in love with each other get mixed up in a murder. I don't like it. Listen, I've never had a really successful book. Well, that's because you keep on writing murder mysteries. No, it's not. It's because they're corny murder mysteries. Well, this time I've got a real plot. I'm going to find out who killed that guy, and then I'll write the novel. Think of the publicity I'll get. No, Jeff, it isn't worth it. Listen, whatever's happened up to now, it's over and done with. We've got nothing to worry about. Are you sure? Well, certainly. Okay. Oh! <laughs> Turner, open the door. Yes? Listen, we just heard a shot. Yes, it was right in the basement. We... Say, there's smoke in this room. Yes, I'm sorry. You uh, you did hear a shot. I was cleaning this gun and it went off. No damage done. Oh. Oh. <laughs> well, let's see. But it was in the basement. No, it was up here. You probably heard it through the dumbwaiter shaft. Oh. Oh. Anything else? Well... No, I guess not. Well, there is one thing, Mr. Turner. You promised us some shade for the bathroom window, and as long as we're here, oh, well, yeah, I... I'm sorry. Come in. Oh, thank you. Oh, let's see. It must be something that will serve temporarily. What about this afghan? Well, I don't think that'll cover the window. How about the screen, Mr. Turner? The screen? Oh, I don't see why not. 
You could stand it up in front of the window. Oh, that'll be fine. Take it, Jeff. Well, thanks a lot. Need any help? No, I'll, I'll manage. Good evening, Mr. Turner. Oh, uh, good evening, Mr. Lingle. Come in. Mr. and Mrs. Troy, this is Mr. Lingle. He lives in the apartment across the hall. How do you do? Hello. How do you do? Can I give you a hand? Oh, that's all right. Thanks, Mr. Lingle. Good night, Mr. Turner. Good night. Turner, you stupid pluck. What have I done? That screen. That came out of Kaufman's apartment on the top floor, didn't it? Now, don't worry, Lingle. They never saw it before. Did you point out the address to him? What address? Brule's address. Andrew Brule, 507 West 12th Street. It is written on the screen. Why didn't you tell me? I just saw it as he carried the screen out the door. Wait here. Wait a minute. Where are you going? I'm going to get that screen back. Tell him I've changed my mind. You haven't got a mind. Sit down. I've got to get that address off the screen. We'll get it my way. Sit down. Jeff, Jeff, wake up. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jeff, listen. I heard a noise. Mm -hmm. Jeff, there's somebody in this apartment. I can hear him moving around. Well, tell him to sit down and be quiet. Oh. <laughs> Jeff, wake up. It's coming from the bathroom. Go back to sleep. Listen. Do you hear it? Yeah, but I wish I didn't. Wait a minute. What? Oh, oh! I'm crazy. It's old Hickory. Oh. He must be in the bathroom. <laughs> in the turtle, of course. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. Go back to sleep. Uh, good night. Night. <gasps> Jeff. What? I just remembered. I put old Hickory out in the fountain. Will you please make up your mind? But it's not the turtle. It's not. There's someone in here. All right. Here I go. You wait here. Oh, no. I'm going with you. If you're going to be murdered, I'm going to be murdered, too. Oh, stop talking about murder. Well, just, just yell, Jeff. Maybe somebody will hear us and come and help. Oh, that's the coward's way. Only a coward would do that. Well? Well, all right, I'll yell. <laughs> Who's there? I've got you covered. Oh, Jeff! He's gone. Out the window. Put on the light. Jeff, are you all right? I'm okay. The light, quick. Oh, he broke the window. Look, there's a knife. A knife? Jeff, that noise. It was like someone scraping something. Here it is on the screen. See that writing? Let's see. Looks like it's been scratched off. Something 07 West 12th Street. Well, that looks like the top of a five. Yes, it is. 507 West 12th Street. 507. Say, that address... I've got it. Polly's boyfriend. That was the address on that letter. Oh. The letter that you and she were playing post office with? That's it, all right. The name of the guy was Brule, Andrew Brule. Well, whoever it was, he didn't want us to see that address. Call me a cab, will you, sweet? I've got to get my clothes oh, on. Oh, Jeff, it's after 3 o'clock in the morning. Well, in that case, if Mr. Brule is a respectable guy, he'll be home and asleep, and I'm going to wake him up. You mean we're going to wake him up? Yes? Yeah. Oh, good evening. Good evening. It's morning. Yes, well, I'm sorry to disturb you, but it's very urgent that I see Mr. Brule. He isn't here. Oh, well, uh, where is he? I don't know. Oh, are you Mrs. Brule? No, I'm not. I'm Mrs. DeVoe. I wrote an apartment to Mr. Brule. That's all I know about him. Well, look, uh, would you mind answering a few questions? Yes, I would. Well, I'd be glad to make it worth your while. Darling, do you have your purse? Yes, but I... Well, give me about $20. All right. What do you want to know? Well, uh... Does Mr. Brule get his mail here? Yes, he does. But that's about all. I hardly ever see him. Does he get letters from uh, Polly Franklin? Yes, every Saturday. And what about a man named Edward Turner? Well, I see that one every Friday. Regular as clockwork. See. And does he still get mail from Robert H. Scott? Uh-huh. And what about Louis Kaufman? Kaufman? Kaufman. No, I... I don't remember any Kaufman. Say, you seem to know more about this than I do. What are you asking me questions for? Look, you tell me what I want to know, and I'll tell you what you want to know. Now, what does Mr. Brule look like? Haven't you ever seen him? No, never. Oh, I see. Well, he isn't exactly my type. He's sort of large and bulky, and he has a scar on his face. <gasps> Kaufman! Quiet. Who's Kaufman? Oh, um, well, just a friend of ours who sounds sort of like that description. Um, uh, tell me, is he blonde? No, he's black-haired. Oh, well, not a bit like Kaufman, is it, darling? No, of course not. Mm -hmm. Is that all you want to know? That's all, but I'll probably come back sometime in the morning. Will that be all right? I guess so. Well, good night. Good night. Come on, darling. So, Kaufman and Brule are the same guy. 
Yes, maybe. What do you mean, maybe? You just heard that woman describe Kaufman and say that he was brutal. And everybody at 50 Gay Street was mailing him letters. What's it sound like to you? Blackmail. Sure. One of them killed the blackmailer, and the others are helping to hide the murderer. But, dear, don't you think it's odd that they're all living in the same apartment house? Oh, I got that all figured out. How? He made them live together so that he could keep an eye on them. Well, maybe. Maybe, maybe. Can't you see? He mingled with them under the name of Kaufman, and he blackmailed them under the name of Brule. Then somebody found out and killed him. Why, it's simple. Yes, it's a little too simple. Hello. Hello. This is Mrs. DeVoe speaking. Yes. Listen. They were just here. The man and the woman. I did what you wanted. I described Kaufman. Yes. They think Kaufman is brutal. They're coming back in the morning to ask some more questions. What? No. No, listen. No, I won't. No more murders. No more killings. Please. Please, no more. For station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. After a brief intermission, Robert Young and Ann Southern will bring us Act Three of A Night to Remember. But now it's time to give you more news about our wonderful Lux flower seed offer. And what an offer it is. Six large packets of flower garden favorites for just 10 cents and one Lux Flakes opening tab or one Lux toilet soap wrapper. They've been packed especially for us by one of America's best known seed companies. And every one has been treated with plant hormones for faster growth and bigger, earlier flowers. They're a real bargain. A chance to add the beauty of flowers to your victory vegetable garden at a cost of almost nothing. It's a wonderful assortment. Quick-growing candy tuft in delicate pink, soft lilac, and snow white. Wonderful for borders. And heavenly blue morning glories to cover fences, walls, or climb over a porch trellis. And lots of flowers for cutting, so you can have them in the house all summer long. Free-flowering cosmos, giant African marigolds, and prize-winning zinnias in a wide range of vivid colors. And don't forget the long-stemmed Shirley poppies in dramatic reds and pinks. You don't have to be a professional gardener to grow them. They're, they're easy to grow in your garden or in pots or sunny window boxes. Directions for planting and care are right in the back of every packet, so you can't go wrong. Do order your seeds now so you can get them in early. You'll have blooms from early summer to frost. Here's how to get them. Just take the opening tab from any size box of Lux Flakes or the wrapper from one cake of Lux Toilet Soap. Mail it with 10 cents in coin, no stamps please, to Lux Flower Garden, Box 1, New York City. Lux Flower Garden, Box 1, New York City. Be sure to enclose your own name and address, of course. Your dealer has a handy order blank that you can use. And please allow at least two to three weeks for the seeds to reach you. Remember, for each set of six seed packets you order, send 10 cents in coin and either an opening tab from Lux Flakes or a Lux Toilet Soap wrapper to Lux Flower Garden, Box 1, New York City. No stamps, please. This offer expires May 31st and is good only in the United States. Now, Mr. DeMille returns to the microphone. We'll fire a few professional secrets out of our stars when the play is over. But here's the third act of A Night to Remember, starring Anne Southern and Robert Young. Nancy and Jeff have returned to their home sweet home in the basement. It's just 3.30 a.m. as they open the door and hear a girl sobbing in the darkness. Who's there? Who is it? Put on the light. Anne. Why, Anne, what are you doing here? Oh, Nancy, I thought you'd never get home. Oh, here, darling, here. What's wrong? Oh, I feel like I'm losing my mind. You've got to help me, Nancy. Well, of course I will, Anne. Oh, sure. What are you afraid of? That's a silly question, Nancy. You know what she's afraid of. The same thing we're all afraid of. She's afraid that the reason for brutal blackmailing her will come out, aren't you, Anne? Then you know. She made you come here, too? Sure. We're all in the same boat. Too. Oh, all in the same boat. I've been hearing that for a year. 
At first, when I heard he was dead, I was glad. Then I realized that one of us had killed him. I've got so I don't trust anybody. And yet I want to talk. I want to. Well, you go ahead. Sure, talk all you want to. Tell me, Ann, how did you folks find out that Brule and Kaufman were the same person? Oh, everybody suspected it. Then when we found out he was dead, my husband and Lingle searched his apartment. They found letters, papers, everything he needed. And why was Kaufman or Brule or whatever his name was, why was he blackmailing you? Oh, it's so long ago that it seems unreal. Do you remember Philip Higby? Higby? Oh, you mean the Playboy murder case? Yes. Oh, I was in the apartment. The shot came through the window. I was scared and ran away. Oh, yes. I remember reading about that in the papers. So you were the mysterious brunette. Yes, the stupid brunette. After the story died down, I thought I was going to be all right. I met Robert. Then after we were married... Drew began to blackmail you. Yes. What did he have on Lingle? Well, Lingle was an art dealer. He forged a painting and Brule found out. All of us, we've done something. He made us live here. Well, tell me, what happened to Kaufman's furniture? Well, we split it up in the various apartments. We thought it would keep the police from finding out that he was Brule. Well, how about Polly? Was he blackmailing her? Yes. She wrote some silly love letters and this man got hold of them. And she was afraid the father would try to take her child away from her, is that it? Yes. I see. Now, uh, what about Turner? Turner? Well, Turner was... Oh! Oh! Jeff! Well, Jeff, aren't you going to see what that was? I don't have to. I know what it was. Somebody screamed. Oh! See? What did I tell you? Well, it's right outside. What's the matter here? Oh! oh, it happened again. It crawled over my foot. Oh, Mrs. Salter, don't be frightened. It wasn't anything. What's wrong down here? It's all right, Mr. Lingle. That turtle crawled over Mrs. Salter's foot. Turtle? What turtle? What are you doing here, Mrs. Salter? Well, Mr. Turner told me to come. He said Mrs. Scott was here and that I should listen. She's crazy. I never told her that. I want to get out of here. Let me out. Oh, sit down, Mrs. Salter. Calm yourself. Anne. What's this all about? Oh, Robert, I... Oh, she was just down here visiting with us, weren't you, Anne? Then we heard that scream. How long have you been down here, Anne? Yes. What were you doing down here? We were just gossiping, Mr. Lingle. Yes. Did you talk, Anne? Doesn't make any difference, Lingle. I knew all about it anyway. Knew what? That Brule was blackmailing you. What are you talking about? So you tricked her into talking. I ought to punch you in the nose. Oh, Scott, please Yeah, wait a minute, Scott. You think you're a pretty smart guy, don't you? Yes, and I'm smart enough to know something the rest of you don't know. What's that? You all think Brule and Kaufman were the same person. We know they were. So one of you killed Kaufman and figured you were safe. Well, I'm telling you they weren't the same. Brule is still alive. That's a new twist. Can you prove it? Yes. How do you know? They found papers in Kaufman's room. Would a blackmailer leave his evidence lying around for everyone to see? Kaufman was only a stooge. He was working for Brule. Then he started out on his own with the evidence Brule had gathered over the course of years. Brule didn't like that, so Brule killed him. Then, then you mean we aren't safe? Brule is alive. Yes, Mr. Lingle. Brule is alive and living in this house. You give me about three hours tomorrow morning, and I'll turn him over to you. I say him, but Brule may be a woman. Don't forget that. And I've got a pretty good hunch right now who the murderer is. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Come on, Nancy. Well, that was a nice move. Shh, quiet. You told them Brule was alive. He is. All right, he is. But you told them you knew who he was. Don't you realize what he'll do now? Sure. As soon as he thinks we're asleep, he'll probably come down here to knock me off. Then I'll find out for certain who he is. Oh. Oh, that's a dandy idea, dear. Just dandy. When he comes down to kill you, you'll know right away that he killed Kaufman. And then he'll kill you because you know he killed Kaufman. And then I'll know he killed you, so he'll kill me. <laughs> oh, Jeff, you're an idiot. Oh, but Nancy... Come on, we're leaving, and right now... No, I'm going to stay here. This is my big chance. It's the last chapter of my novel. The last chapter of your life, you mean. Oh, don't worry about me. Oh, Jeff, for heaven's sake, you haven't even got a gun. Look, dear, you don't want a husband who's a coward, do you? I'm not particular. I just want a husband. <laughs> so anyhow, I'm staying here. I'm going to see this thing through to the finish. Okay, darling. Okay. If you've made up your mind to stay, then you stay and I'll stay too. Oh, now, dearest, be sensible. <laughs> the sensible people just go to the phone, dial O, and ask for a policeman. And let the police have all the glory after I've done all the work? All right. All right, Jeff. But I'm staying. And while we're waiting to be glorified, perhaps we'd better notify your draft board. <laughs> Nancy? What? Nothing. I just wondered if you were asleep. Have you heard anything? Just my pulse. <laughs> what time is it? 
About 4.30. They ought to be here any minute. Huh? Who? Jeff, I've got a confession to make. What? I dialed O and asked for a policeman. You mean... When? When you were brushing your teeth. Oh, Nancy, don't you realize what that'll do? It'll bring Hankin and a raft of policemen down here. Oh, I hope so. Can you keep a secret? Uh-huh. I hope so, too. <laughs> oh, Jeff, if, if Brew comes, what are you going to do? Well, now, don't worry. I've got my golf clubs here. Oh, Jeff, I wish you'd taken more lessons. If you did... <laughs> shh, shh, shh. <laughs> Jeff. There's, there's someone coming outside the door. Oh, put on the lights. Okay. For the love of... Oh, hurry, Jeff. Nancy, the lights are... Somebody's done something to them. Well, get a candle. Get something. Shh, quiet, quiet. Ah! Oh, Jeff! Help, help! Somebody, anybody! Nancy! Oh, Jeff, there's your car! Nancy! Get a flashlight here! Flashlight! Oh, Jeff, the police are here! Hold on to him! Hold on to him! I can't let go of him! Oh, oh. help! On. The lights are busted, Chief. Jeff! Put your flash over here. Troy, where are you? Here. Here, here. Oh, I'm... Jeff, are you all right? Yeah, I, I think so. Where is he? Where's the guy who was here? He got away. When you shot, he broke away. Search the building. Put a guard at every door. That man, he tried to kill my husband. He's the murderer, whoever he is. You've got to find him. Oh. Oh, look. See, if you're going to sing, go ahead, but don't stand there with your mouth open. <laughs> What's wrong? Closet. What about the closet? Well, look on the... On the floor? Yes. Chief, look, I see it. Look, what? Chief. What about it? What is it? See? Well, I'm shining the flash. There's blood coming out from under the door. All right. Come on out. Who's ever in there? Come on out. Open the door, Bowling. Okay. <laughs> Watch him. It's okay, Chief. One of those shots slammed him right in the chest. He's dead. You sure? Sure, I'm sure. He made it as far as the closet, I guess, and that's all. Well, uh, who is it? Put the light on his face. Oh, it's Mr. Lingo. Lingo, huh? Then he's the blackmailer. He's the one who killed Kaufman. <gasps> Jeff, it's Mr. Um, Jeff. Jeff, where are you? He's all right, lady. He just kind of passed out for a minute. There he is on the floor again. Oh, <laughs> Jeff, look at me. Oh, darling, are you all right? Speak to me. Uh, are you sure the murderer's dead? Yes, darling. Okay, what do you want to talk about? <laughs> Our stars will be back in a moment for a curtain call. Now, ladies, confidentially... Would you like to know where you can get some more nylon stockings? Well, I, I'm awfully sorry. I can't tell you because I just don't know. But I can tell you how to make the stockings you have last longer. And that's the next best thing to having new ones, isn't it? Listen. Just lux your stockings after every wearing. Yes, it's as easy as that. And it really works. As a matter of fact, it's been proved that luxing stockings cuts down runs over 50%. A famous laboratory, the United States Testing Company, Incorporated, made a whole series of strain tests on rayon stockings, and they found that luxing cuts runs in half. They tested silk and nylon and cotton stockings, too, and got the same kind of results. Now, there's a reason why Lux cuts down runs. Strong soap, or rubbing with cake soap, weakens the elastic qualities of your stockings, so they break easily, the way an old dried-out rubber band snaps when you pull it. But new improved Lux saves the elasticity of stockings. You'll find it really pays to Lux stockings after every wearing. Of course, be sure to let your rayons dry thoroughly. They need at least a whole day, 24 hours. And two whole days drying time is safer. Remember, a Luxing a day helps to keep runs away. Now, here's Mr. DeMille with our stars. There will be plenty of excitement here next week, too. Before our stars come back, let me show you what I mean. I tell you, there's a woman walking around Lisbon right now with the plans for the new torpedo. Oh, don't be ridiculous, Ken. No woman could get those plans here from America. Oh, but this woman is smart, you see. 
Very smart and very beautiful. She had those plans tattooed on her back. On her back? Sure. They're there now in invisible ink while she waits to sell them to the highest bidder. To the Nazis, maybe, or the Japs. Well, who is she? Who is this woman, do you know? She killed to get those plans. She murdered a man in America. And she'll murder again to hold on to them. I've got to watch her. Watch her every minute. But you don't know who the woman is. I've got an idea, darling. You see, I think it's you. To find out what happened after that, I suggest you join us next Monday night. I'll tell you the name of the play and who will be in it in a few minutes. Tonight was indeed a night to remember. We won't forget the two stars who made it that. Anne Southern and Robert Young, and here they are. Thank you, C.B. It was swell to be here and work with Annie. Don't call me Annie, Bobby. <laughs> Don't call me Bobby, Annie. <laughs> All right, shall we go around again? <laughs> you two seem to have met before. Oh, Ann and I have been working for the same boss for years. You know, it, it, it always interests me, Bob, to hear how a star became a star instead of, well, say, a detective. How did it happen with you? Very simple, C.V. I used to be a copy boy in a newspaper here in Los Angeles. One evening, I was doing an impersonation of the night editor, a guy nobody liked, when he walked in and saw it. That night, I decided to become an actor. <laughs> My resignation was accepted. You were fired, huh? All right, wise girl, you tell us how you got into pictures. Uh oh no, no, not me. I want to hear about Mr. DeMille. He was an actor once, you know. Well, I, I became an actor because I was hungry. <laughs> and yes, and now I hear he eats actors for breakfast. <laughs> Now, listen here, Annie. Okay, I take it back. What's the name of the play you're going to have next week, C.B.? The name of it, Bob, is The Lady Has Plans. It's a paramount picture and a thrilling one. And next Monday night, our stars will be William Powell and Rita Hayworth. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so I hope you'll all make plans to hear The Lady Has Plans. Well, count me in, Mr. DeMille. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. We'll take a second helping of this any time. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the women of America have proved they can carry their share and more of this war. In the armed services and in industry, they're working for victory. Right now, the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps needs more recruits, and every woman who joins the WAX releases a man for combat duty. Almost every type of non-combat work can be done by women, even highly skilled jobs like bomb site repair, weather observation, and parachute rigging. If you're an American citizen between 21 and 44 and do not have children under 14, you're eligible. Your nearest Army recruiting and induction station has full information about the wax. So if you'd like to take a whack at the axis, join the wax. Our sponsors, the makers of Lux Flakes, join me in inviting you to be with us again next Monday night when the Lux Radio Theater presents Rita Hayworth and William Powell in The Lady Has Plans. This is Cecil B. DeMille saying good night to you from Hollywood. <laughs> Heard in tonight's play were Bradley Page as Turner, Regina Wallace as Mrs. Salter, Lynn Whitney as Polly, Wally Mayer as Hankin, Jane Bierce as Anne, and Eddie Marr, Norman Field, Fred Mackay, Charlotte Treadway, Frank Penny, Leo Cleary, Charles Seal, Ken Christie, and Warren Ash. Our music was directed by Louis Silvers. And this is your announcer, John M. Kennedy, reminding you to tune in next Monday night to hear William Powell and Rita Hayworth in The Lady Has Planned. Mothers, you have a difficult problem these days with food rationing and shortages. It's harder now to get vitamin-rich foods, yet it's up to you to see that your family doesn't get low on vitamins. So get Vim. VIMS supply all the essential vitamins and all the minerals commonly lacking. Yet VIMS cost less than a nickel a day in the new family size. Remember, VI for vitamins, double MS for minerals. Get VIMS 
at your druggist. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs>